Hi, Bill Crocus from Hanson Industrial Peoria again. We're going to talk about two dustless sweepers. First, the high-end uh, Ride KM9060R with AGM batteries and dual brushes, 45 inches wide. And the self-propelled, man-propelled, I should say, the KM7020C, which is 20 inches wide with one brush on or off, dustless sweepers. First we're going to talk about the KM7020C. With any Karcher products, yellow indicates touch points and operational points. First of all, you have the brush down there. It goes either really aggressive or least aggressive. You have the handles which you can remove and, and close it, which allow you to put the sweeper in a closed area for storage or inside a vehicle from one location to the next. Go ahead and tighten those back up again because we're going to get that set up. The other thing too is on the brush, side brush, you have an adjustment on this for more aggressive and least aggressive depending how you want the brush to be located on the ground but all manual. And then you have your collection tub. Inside there you can see the brush, and underneath here, these are screens. There's a little flap and a little pin that you pull out that's manually pulled out to clean those screens as they get plugged. And all you do is wash them with warm water and light soap, rinse them off really good and let them dry overnight and reinstall them back in. They're shaped as a kind of a uh, oblong square. Oblong rectangle is probably the best way to say it but they fit in only one spot. So let's go ahead and show you what this thing does. When you push it, you see that brush turn. It also turns the fan on the, in, or the brush on the inside. You can go different directions, but what's nice, just in the small area that I went, there was no dust and look at the debris that came out. What's nice about the 7020C, it's like a lawnmower. You just push and go. You can do a 20 to 30,000 square foot building uh, just walking behind it. Um, once the collection area gets full, um, you're, you're ready to dump it and you can keep going. The nice thing too is that the, those screens on the inside we talk about are cleanable. You can spray down the whole piece of equipment and let it dry in the sun if you get really, really dusty like you had a heavy, heavy dirt load. You can pick up um, bolts and nuts that are of three-quarter in size in that collection area. It's pretty awesome. This is how it adjusts up and down. As the brush wears out, you will make it more aggressive so it gets more to the ground as the brush starts to break down. So now what we're going to do is that we're going to take the unit off the pallet. They normally ship where you can take the pallet apart. We're not going to talk about that, and I apologize, because our pallet came in uh, from the freight carrier and it was a little beat up. So I had to make a piece of um, wood structure to go ahead and offload the floor sweeper off the pallet. Really important that you have 36 to 40 inches from, top, from the top of the pallet down because you don't want to hit the bottom of the sweeper when you're dismantling it. Otherwise, you'll get kind of stuck and, or, or do some damage underneath. And like all Karcher pieces of equipment, anything in yellow are touch points. On the dash, you have a dial. The dial will indicate just move mode, brushes, and brush, and the outlet brushes located on there. You have forward and reverse switch. You have a shaker, and what the shaker does is when the filter gets dirty, you press that button, and it will rattle the filter for 15 seconds so the dirt falls down into the collection bins. You have a horn, 
you have an hour meter, you have a bunch of LED lights, then you got the emergency stop, or some people call it the oh crap button, where you push it in and it kills everything. To release that, you just pop that up. Also here is the key switch, it either goes on or off. This is your, your brake as well as your throttle. When you release it, it automatically brakes. When you press on it, it has different levels to go fast or slow. You have this little vent right here. If for some reason there was some mist out and you went over with the brush, so you wouldn't get it on the inside filter, which I'll show you that, you open this and, this, and the, the mist comes out of there. Down here are the brushes and those make this unit 45 inches wide to collect dirt and debris. This um, foot pedal is, you hear that noise, it opens the cage down below so that the sweeper can pick up items that are about this tall. So if you're driving over something there's a big nut and bolt there and it wants to get in, it'll hit the sweeper, but if you push that down it opens it up and scoops it up and throws it inside the tray. The trays are located on both sides and they slide out. There's one on this side and there's one on this side. Underneath the seat, this is the filter and that helps keeping the debris and stuff collecting inside there as the, um, the vacuum is working so it doesn't damage the vacuum and it's replaceable. Um, you don't want to get it soaking wet. You pretty much want to use the vacuum on dry surfaces only. It has two huge batteries on there to give it its power. And they're AGM batteries, what they call wet batteries. This is the power circuit. This is also where you do your charging. There's a small adapter to a large adapter, and the unit does come with a charger. And if you're not going to use it for a long period of time, you keep it disconnected. One more thing, there's a seal around here. This seals around this surface down here, which is what gives you your vacuum suction. So when this vacuum is sucking there, it pulls that down, pulls everything through the filter and pulls everything up underneath. This area um, is the area of where the batteries and the vacuum and all that stuff is, but it also has to be lifted up and leaned over for you to charge the batteries too which is very important. One more important thing that I didn't talk about in operation is the seat. It slides forward for really small people and it'll slide all the way back. The seat has just like on forklifts, you have to have at least a hundred pounds sitting on it. Otherwise it thinks no one's there and it won't move. There's three tires on this vacuum. We have two in the back and they're air and they held about 90 psi and they're good rugged tires and then there's a nice heavy grip tire around the front which is solid and that's your steering tire. That steering tire allows you to turn this unit in its width a 360 all the way around and I'll try to demonstrate that for you in this um, environment but that also is really good on oily surfaces. It does have a clutch lock on it, basically a lever that you can disconnect it and it locks this whole system so it doesn't move. It's set right now to be open and once you get delivered and you get it set up at your place, you leave it open all the time. Unless you're hauling it on a trailer and strapping it down, then you'll have to lock it and unlatch it and we can go in detail with you on that if, if you get to that point. The shaker does this for 15 seconds, loosening everything up so the debris falls into the lower compartments. It lasts for 15 seconds and then it's on. Okay, we're going to turn the switch on. And we got it in the front position, just movement of the car. As you can see, it can go forward, and then you let the foot brake, it, it stops, you go in reverse, you'll have the beep, it's going in reverse. For safety, go back in the front, 
And I was telling you about the 360 movement. So the thing can turn around and do a 360. I'm almost feeling like Forrest Gump. Driving that snapper lawnmower. Some of the other then features is the standard brush, which is the brush down there. You hear it? These brushes will turn, but they won't go to the ground until you turn it all the way over. And you'll be sweeping. And that's the vacuum on too. And we'll back her back up here. The shaker I was telling you about. Is on shaking. You have a horn. And then the emergency stop. Cuts everything off. The other piece I was telling you about was this piece. You can hear it opening that door, making it a little bit bigger. It's spring-loaded to let bigger solids come in. So once you hit the emergency stop, you got to turn the key off, reset it, wait a few seconds, turn it back on, your light's back on again, and you're moving around again. And the cool thing, it's kind of fun to drive. All right, so just doing what I did on a floor that's pretty clean, that's how fine of a dust this will pick up. So if you have a dusty environment, this setup will get you filtered and vacuumed up pretty fine, just like a standard vacuum would at your house. It does a really, really good job. And here's the other side, and you can tell both of them are equal. And like with any of these brushes, and I know I mentioned it uh, once or twice, it's important to know that you want to do it on dry surfaces. If it's really wet, all that dirt, just like on a standard brush, gets collected to the brushes, and you're going to have to clean those off and let them dry before you can go ahead and use them again. Pretty important to know. Hey, thank you for taking the time to watch our videos. And sometimes I get to have a lot of fun in the process. Thank you.